Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. I have a sort of whirlwind of little things, plus a uh, part two of the Q&A today. But first, I want to show you a little behind the scenes of the studio of what it looked like for me to get it ready to uh, do the taping for Benertex. Plus, while I'm talking to you right now, it is still set up because we had a technical difficulty on my time frame, so we had to actually stop that one. Um, guess the other designers couldn't get in and the sound was bad, so they had to rerun it. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I'm taping my video for today in between those and everything's still kind of wacky in here. So let me just show you this little clip. So here's a little behind the scenes. I have to pull the rolling carts out of the way because sometimes they can kind of be seen between there. I have this backdrop that I put up so that my computer's on the other side and I'll swing around and show you that. I have to stack a whole bunch of stuff over there and clean off all of this because this is the area that you see when I'm sitting at my computer. So there is my little backdrop. So that's what it looks like. I have to sort of move everything, then put everything back. And well, that's just the way it is because I don't have a separate filming area. I film in my regular room. So that means I'm always constantly moving things in order to get the right place. So on our calendar today, which is still the April calendar, it says Scrapalicious and I've done nothing with that. So I've done nothing with scraps uh, at all this, this month, except for doing, you know, using some of the two and a half inch squares to make uh, the little checkerboard blocks. Um, so we'll have to have a Scrapalicious conversation another day. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Um, but if you're doing something with scraps and you want to share it today over at our community, Quilt Along with Pat Sloan, that would be awesome. Share a scrap quilt you're working on, one of your favorite scrap quilts. Uh, if you want to, um, you know, tell me about it here in the comments at YouTube, go for it. This is the day to talk about scraps. <laughs> and before we do the Q&A, uh, I have... Um, some pictures to show you some of your quilts because when we had uh the log cabin day the log cabin show there were so many interesting wonderful log cabins so i just collected a couple of them and i want to show you what those look like so take a peek there were so many amazing log cabin quilts and they can look so different so let's start with blanche and i love the way that it actually makes almost like a circle in the middle of her quilt now, a lot of them are symmetrical like Carmen's where it sort of has a center part going out. So you're going to see a few of them like that because I want to show you just how different they can look. Carol's is um, like a, a rainbow effect, but she separated those with black. And then the border is just amazing fabric. That really beautiful fabric is all those colors together. Now DH here has another one where it's a center and this is a center that's a star. So that just sort of radiates out into the other um, sort of circles around it. Elaine's is a really traditional sort of barn raising style where it goes a dark center, light, dark, light, dark, and then those light corners. Now, I, this is one that you'll see a lot of any, you know, when you're out and about looking at log cabin quilts. Jerry's is so pretty with these, this beautiful floral. So there's actually not a lot of fabrics in hers so that she could set pinks are all looks like the same pink. And so it gives you that really strong contrast. Heather's gives the effect of curves, which I think is so spectacular with log cabins. It depends on the width of your fabrics and there's lots of patterns that show you how to do that. Jennifer's is another that has a bursting star in the middle and you can see with hers, the center of the each log cabin is a pretty large square where she used the purple. Leela's is a zigzag. I thought that was pretty cool. Anytime that you're working with a log cabin, you're basically can create designs that have anything you do with a, a half square triangle because they have a dark on one side and a light on the other. Lillian's was made in 2014. It is a, an incredible pattern. It has that extra little bit to give those loops around everything. And that's an extra part to the log cabin pattern. You can create images like Lois did here with the Christmas tree. Once again, it's like thinking about it as a half square triangle and then rearranging things to work like that. Mary Alice's is so beautiful with all the scrappy lights. I just wanted you to see how that looks. It's just really, really pretty. 
Nan, Nana has green, green, everything green. So she did hers in like, I think that's a carpenter wheel style. I mean, you could do this as half square triangles. Uh, and then she has that pop, looks like a pop of red in the middle of a lot of those blocks. Sharon's is an offset. Uh, which you know it almost looks like one you know half of the half of a you know radiating out a barn raising so that's really cool so you can play around with your designs Stacy went out to the looks like the lake the lake or the river and uh, shared her beautiful star log cabin Susan's uh, is another one that used a lot of the same fabric for her light so that it actually reads kind of like a solid and gives it a different effect when they're put together. Cheryl's creates these sort of spheres, these balls, which I think I love that look of a log cabin. And they're, they're not curved, they're just the way that the strips are set. Debbie did a wreath, which this is so darling. I love the red in the middle of each of the green squares. And we'll wrap up with Kim's, which she used a lot of lights, but they look like there's a variety of them. So there's a little bit of texture in there that you can see. And then I love all the happy colors she used as the opposite part of the, the creams for her log cabin. So I have the second part of our uh, Q&A. So there were, there were quite a few questions. Uh, questions do repeat, so... You know, I won't always be doing these because there isn't anything kind of fresh and new, but I thought every so often I will, I will collect up a bunch of the questions that are coming and answer them here. So for, and I didn't keep everybody's name. So, and some of them, some of you, a lot of you asked the same question. So Robin asked one, is that how do I not get burned out with so all the sewing I do? Well, you know, first of all, remember it's my business. And second is I don't sew all day long. That isn't the business. The business is managing things and community work. Uh, so it's not sitting at my sewing machine. So like yesterday, the only thing I sewed was uh, three seams. I sewed this seam, that seam, and then this one here. That's it. That's all I sewed. I did some other work. I actually had some time off. I was in my garden. I sat outside and visited with some neighbors who are moving. So I'm not sitting at my machine 10 hours a day. Um, so I don't really get burnout. out. Um, I've been doing uh, quilting for, I don't know, 30 years and my business for 22 years and I still love it and there's no sign of burnout here. So if you are feeling burnt out with your craft, Sometimes you just need to switch gears a little bit. You need to uh, sort of talk to yourself a little bit about why do you feel burnt out with, with your craft? Are you like have too many deadlines and it's supposed to be a hobby? Have you made too many deadlines for yourself? Are you a person who doesn't like to do a lot of mo a lot of projects at once and you have too many projects? Are you or the opposite? You love to do a lot of projects, but you're kind of only doing one and it's boring and you're tired of it. Um, start a new project that'll solve it. Uh, so so look at yourself if that uh, burnout is happening to you. But no, I don't I don't ever really feel that, which I guess I'm lucky. <laughs> okay. Uh, several people asked, are these Longenberger baskets that you see me show you occasionally? I show a, a, a wooden basket and yes, they're Longenberger. So I grabbed a couple. Here's one of my bigger ones. I collected these um, quite a few years ago and I have not bought any for a long time. The, the company did close and then did reopen. Uh, so, but I had bought mine many years ago when one of my local friends was selling them. So I have lots of different sizes and uh, even over in like my rolling cart here, this red one is a Longenberger because some of them are painted. So I have a, a group of those red ones. So if you also have them, use them and love them. They are awesome. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is a fun one. So Claudia wants to know, how do I keep the backs of my blocks so neat? I've never seen one thread. Well, I rarely show you the back of my block, so I'm really not sure what back you saw, but I can show you one right now. And I don't know, there's stuff back there. There's little threads hanging off. I can see one right here in the light. There's a thread hanging off. I mean, fiber is woven. When you cut, there's going to be little threads. I mean, if you are having something that's shredding, um, maybe look at the manufacturer that you're purchasing. You know, is that fabric line maybe one that's 
uh, not got a tight enough weave or you know try a different manufacturer or something like that but no my blocks are not I mean I don't have tons of threads all over but I'm using all the regular quilt shop variety of fabrics and they just seem to all behave pretty nicely and I do not starch or anything like that so you know I rarely starch so a couple of you wanted to know what happened to the owl block you know for a while up on my wall over here I hung the owl block because I was hoping I would get to it quickly but I got tired of seeing it up there so I took it down that's what happened to it I just got tired of looking at it so here it is I haven't decided whether I will make it into a pillow which was my first thought or maybe just keep it in my uh, extra blocks up here to do something with someday I don't know since I haven't figured it out I need to put it away for a while because it's just visually taking up space and I didn't want to look at it so there's um so Sarah asked what stitch length do I use on my machine so let me just fire that baby up I pretty much use the stitch length that's on my Solaris now you can't go by what my, one machine stitch length is you have to kind of check your own but my default for straight stitch is 2.5 and so sometimes I take it down to a 2 uh, somewhere in between the 2 and 2.5 but that is what I use but you need to test your own to see okay there was uh do okay Diane asked do I wash my finished quilts uh and especially those I give away so I will um, the quilts that I'm sending out right now when they're going out in bulk I do not wash them I let the organization that gets them decide on that if I'm giving a personal one I will wash it before I send it particularly for babies and things like that if it's a wall hanging no for my own uh, production work you know things are going to books magazines whatever no because once you wash it it changes the texture of the quilt you know it gets that nice crinkly feel which creates a lot of shadows for photography so photography is much better if you have not washed it because you have the nice flat surface still and the light doesn't sort of go in those valleys and and make a more troublesome uh, good photo at least that's what I uh, do if there's something a lot of people will ask me this is kind of um, an overriding question <laughs> all I will go to the to the YouTube questions and half of you will ask me for a link to something that I have already given you I've, you know, you ask me on the video where I gave you the link you will ask where's the link so if you're watching this video right now if you look in the description box there's the links so open that if you're on a phone you have to find the little drop down arrow or whatever it is on your app to get that box to open but it's there so please look there first because it takes me time to answer when I could be answering you know which I've already given you I've already given you the information so it would be better if you could just look first and be sure it's there 99 percent of the time I've put the link occasionally I've forgotten or it's something I just casually mentioned and so I didn't bother to put the link then I'm happy to find it okay I have a few questions on the salvage quilts and salvages themselves um, one uh, person asked is the salvage width of fabric um, no it's not actually your width of fabric is the term that goes from edge to edge or salvage to salvage so here is a piece of fabric cut off the bolt okay here's the salvage at the bottom you can see the writing and so your width of fabric is from here to here which is basically like four between 40 and 41 and a half inches the salvage runs length of fabric it runs what comes off the bolt so if the bolt has 15 yards you could get a 15 yard salvage just you know if you were going to buy all 15 yards and just cut that edge off so here is where you're cutting off so that is that is the part right there and I have another one that one of our friends sent me so here's one that she obviously had uh, bought probably a yard and a half of fabric and then here is the writing there and then you can see blank 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 then there's some more color dots and then more of the writing so that is normally how the salvage goes you don't have color and you'll have writing rather on all of it okay a couple more on this um, what do you do if you don't have enough of these to start a quilt 
Well, there you could buy more fabric. <laughs> you could look maybe on Etsy or eBay and see if somebody's selling them, but you need to be sure of the quality of it, that they're actually giving you enough fabric above it and not just cutting it at the white part, which is kind of useless. You really can't use them if you only get the white part. But you can you can also, of course, join a guild and talk with friends and, and basically you have to build it up. It isn't something that you just start with, you know, a handful of fat quarters and make a whole red zinger quilt like I'm going to do. You're going to have to collect them for a little bit. And then the other question that came from Diane was, you know, how do you know when you have enough of these? I don't know. I don't know. I have not made a quilt with selvages yet, so I will be making my first one. And because I primarily want to use this section, like this does not interest me. That'll just be white. It is not exciting. So I want the parts with the words. And because as you see, the words are not the whole way across, that means, um, you know, I will not use the whole length of what people have sent me or what I have cut off for myself. So it will vary. And I will, you know, I will learn and see how far I go after I make a couple of blocks. Then I can get a, be, a sort of judge how much is used. All right, my friends, <laughs> these were really good, fun questions. I appreciate you sending them. Um, <clears throat> leave them on my YouTube occasionally. This is where most of these have come from. Occasionally I'll pull one off of the community. I'm sort of trying to scan and collect them as I come in. So every so often, maybe once a month, I might go through and answer these. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.